after finishing my last video about Scree Compare, which I made, I don't know, I guess a week ago or something like that. 11 days, okay, yeah. I continued the development of Street Compare to actually finish it and to implement it with my uh, parsing library for HTML. I'm sorry for HTML, for uh, HTTP, HTTPS. And finally, I have something working, something to show. So this is the readme, very simple. I took example of, from these two, um, these two libraries, libraries, well, these two projects, Tiny Proxy and Nginx, they're not libraries. And I got it working finally. I have a steady make file finally, which works amazingly. I have a test, a simple test program, which uses the, the data. It splits it in two, like you have two requests here, split by pipe, a pipe symbol. So if you want to add more tests, you can just go here, add a pipe here and add more requests and then add here more. And then you have for response test data, which I have only one. You can see there's only one pipe. So here it just loops through the, through these two strings using str token and that's basically it that showed you what, what what it's what it's doing. So I'm gonna make it. And if I run if I run test, this is what it does. I go parse lib I'm just to show you the data that corresponds to it. So here we have stats method URI version, which it got out of. Method one means the get method then slash it's a number because uh, dictionaries i mean uh, you could use it on a, as an array or inside the face with switch http one one then headers it gets host user agent and accept same process here i mean it's just for switch statements then same here with this one google.com or whatever and then the headers Except here it doesn't recognize one header, it doesn't recognize, I think, this one and another one, so it just skips it because it cannot map it to a known value. I'm gonna go through that in a second. That's S3 compare in the background doing its magic. But yeah, this is parslib, I called it. Before it was called a tiny parser or something like that, yeah. Now it's parslib. So this is the implementation. I mean, you, you have init trees, free trees, read line, parse uh, header field, parse request title, parse response title, parse request, parse response, print f, parse, res parse request, print f, parse response. The naming is whatever it is, something. I'm gonna change it to something better. But this is for now. This is temporary. I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna change this in a few days. Now, uh, how it works? Well, the, these are the functions. These are the structs, and the structs are basically for requests. You have this struct which has a title and an entry of headers. The response, same thing, except you have a response title. The difference between these two is very, very barely noticeable. I mean, you have method, URI, and version. Here you have version code and status text. It, they're very similar, but I mean, yeah. And then the implementation is kinda meh. It's made just so that it works. It's stable, in my opinion. But yeah, the cool part here, as it is stated inside of the readme, library is designed to follow source input and all thing, which means that it does not modify the original string. If you go here, test C, and if you take a look at 
uh, the implementation. Here, what we do is string duplicate. We duplicate only because we are using str token. But if we go here and if you take a look, we have a ch and ch is given to parse request and a request um then it is given a request uh <clears throat> well what is it called request uh instance well th this is this basically you just allocate uh, allocate it and that's it the cool part is that this string will never be changed or duplicated in any sort of way the only thing that this structure does in the background is it's fully it's stored in one so there are no pointers here except for this but it's the size is included so you don't have to free multiple things you have to free just the structure and that's it um the cool part is you have pointers here and point is basically a pointer to something with a length given to it so you point to strings two little chunks if you want to refer to a for example we go to test c if we are parsing this string and we want to refer to this part we will make a pointer a point struct to this character and then say the length is one two three four five six seven eight eight or seven so that's it and just append this point here and yeah you can just free it all in one go there is no uh, string on altering, altering so you can rest assured that this is not like str token it will not modify your data it will loop through it and inspect it as many times as it has to but it will never never ever change it which is why i want it to be like because duplicating more strings or modifying something like str str token does is in my opinion a bad solution i mean obviously for str token it makes sense i guess because there is no easy way to split functions uh, to split strings in a sensible manner that implies um good code again just a debate what is good code what is nice code and from whatever standpoint you're looking at it but yeah what i try to do is not modify the original buffer then what can i say what can i say this is it basically this is it. this is my parse library and i made it available on my uh parslib on my github github yeah github sure on my personal git instance and here it is so you can check out the, the development and why am i building it at all because i need a proxy and the proxy is going to use this parse library as a matter of fact it is already using it. If I go to proxlib, proxlib.c, this is my future proxy library. And if we go down here, read do receive CL, CLT. Oh, look, this is just proxlib in the background. Look, we have where is it parse h field this is inside of parse lib or you go here and you where is it parse request line yeah parse request title this is it basically the the library that i'm using now i'm trying to fit it into the proxy and i realized that it, it's fitting perfectly i don't know how i nailed it but i nailed it the implementation Mm. except now I will have to implement the rest of this state machine 
So for parsing client, I guess I'm doing that already in the receive client, so I'll have to change it a bit. Then connect to the server, that would be easy. Forward to the server, easy. Receive server, hard. Parse server, okay-ish. And then forward back to the client, easy. And repeat the cycle until something happens. So that should be it, yeah. Hopefully then I will continue the development with a hacking tool that will implement, implement this proxy. Because I'm trying, at the end of the day, I'm trying not to just create a proxy, I'm trying to create a burp suite. And the cool thing about a burp suite is that it sits between your browser and your website that you're hacking. And if you use that, if, if it's a good tool, it will allow you to discover many vulnerabilities inside of websites. I know from a fact that from Burp Suite I can find a lot of vulnerabilities because I did in the past. So having a terminal version of this, an open source one, and that doesn't limit you with license licenses, would be fantastic. So that would be my goal for all of this. Even if I don't get it working and I leave the project, because it could be too complicated, implementing HTTP version 2, version 3, web sockets and everything, oh my god. Just the fact that HTTP2 is, oh my god, binary based. Which, I guess, fair, because you save up on network data, on network traffic, but the point is that if things were text-based, at least leave them text-based, I don't know, use compression of sorts. I guess it's not as good compression as binary, but then with text you have a lot of other advantages, like it's very easy to parse. It's hella easy to parse this. Like I made it, I made a parser in two weeks in C from scratch and I never done it before. I barely coded in C in my life. I have, what, one, two years of self-learning experience with C, so... I think... It's not a good way to go. And then with the fact that you have TLS and everything included inside of the protocol itself, they're like fusing the TCP stack with this HTTP2, HTTP3, I don't know how the fuck it works. It's just Shiner, I think. Shiner blog HTTP2. I think he made a criticism of this uh, protocol. Where is it? Shiner. I forgot. Shiner and security. Um, secu I can't type. Security, security. Cloudflare reports that almost 7% of volunteer traffic is malicious. Well, great. I know he made. I know he made a. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I know he criticized it. But anyway, he's a non crypt analyst. Um, my point was that I'm trying to create a hacking tool. This is what this parsing HTTP streak compare is all about. So, compare is just used for comparing all of the headers because you have a lot of headers you know you have parse let let's see screen see you have a lot a lot of headers and let's do a lecture like i can't obviously you can't do a streak well you can't do a str compare input one and then do against all of these headers because and then have like if statements for all of this. This would take an eternity to reach the bottom if statement. So it would be proportional to O of in the worst case, I think it would be proportional to O of N. Wait. O of N times 
m times no just o of n times m and n would be the average length of each check string and m would be the would be the number of if statements the average number of statements needed to find the string so that wouldn't be really good with this string compare what you do is you take all of this and you create a tree structure so no matter how many strings you will have to compare against even if you have a thousand of these even if you have a million nobody gives a shit this will always take all of n n being the length of the input string so if your string is like what one character it will take one operation to check if it exists or if it doesn't if it's two characters boom two operations but let's say you had a million uh if statements half of them would be average so uh like this average time average if count and then your length of average length of checked string would be whatever 10 characters or just let's say two you would have to do a million operations just to check one string compared to o of n which is basically in this case would be with a million if say with a million um headers it would still be just one or two two freaking executions or operations so it's a lot better it's not as good as a hash map i'm not bragging about it it's obvious it's obviously nothing much it's, compared to a hash map this is still pretty bad because a hash map has constant time right yeah it's always off off one so i mean yeah but hey I didn't want to write a hash map at that time, maybe in the future, but I am researching MD5 a bit, so I'm tr I'm peeking into the algorithms, but yeah, so far, I'm just going to use S3 compare. That's all.